Uh, one of the things that is very difficult um, in dealing with climate change and agriculture is that um, the government and the United Nations don't have very good statistics on um, exactly how much damage agriculture is doing. And so what I want to do today is try to give you a better perception of what uh, has really been going on with uh, emissions, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, especially from agriculture. So there's three major greenhouse gases and there are CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide that account for about 90% of all the greenhouse gases that um, are emitted in agriculture. And the US EPA and um, the uh, United Nations decided in 2007 that emissions were very low, especially CO2 emissions were relatively low in agriculture, but they didn't include all of these emissions. Um, from fertilization or petroleum fueled vehicles, uh, trucks, tractors, combines, or from freezing, cooling, and heating foods or shipping foods uh, to market. And in this country, that's the whole deal. I mean, hardly anything is grown near where you eat it, so uh, you're shipping everything around. Uh, methane, um, th these emissions are much greater and they're much more damaging. I think that's the most important thing. Um, and they're 21 times more damaging than CO2. We hear a lot about CO2, but we don't hear very much about uh, methane, except in terms of animal gases. Um, and confinement animal practices uh, since 1995 have dramatically increased. In um, uh, 1995, 75% uh, of our hogs were on pasture and in pens, and now 95% of them are confined. And it's the same story with uh, cattle. I mean, it's a total confinement operation, and that increases dramatically the amount of methane that's released. Nitrous oxide, um, emissions are much greater than CO2 or methane. And it's a much more damaging greenhouse gas. It's 310 times more damaging as a greenhouse gas than CO2. And none of our estimates from either the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change or uh, from the US EPA um, include the emissions from producing and shipping of synthetic nitrogen. And that's really, criminal, I mean, when you think about it, because 6.7 kilos of CO2 equivalent are emitted in the production of, uh, and so U.S. farmers use an average of about 11 billion, 200 million kilos of nitrogen every year from 1998 to 2007, and to produce that, um, emitted 75 billion tons of CO2 equivalents, and that, that's not counted. Nobody counts that. So. We're in a situation where, you know, we have this deteriorating uh, agricultural, um, sit, um, you know, condition, and uh, people aren't talking about it as if it's as serious as it is. So there are five major carbon sinks or pools in the world, and one of them's the soil, one of them's the ocean, fossil fuel deposit, plants and forests, and the atmosphere. And uh, the soil and the plants and forests are in real trouble. They're in real trouble because we've trashed them so badly, right? A soil pool should be a sink for excess carbon, but since it's lost its organic matter, it's less than half as effective. And so too many forests have been cut down, too much land has been degraded, you know, too much topsoil has been lost, and so, you know, we now in a situation where we've got to recover that soil. We've got to recover those forests because they're part of that carbon sink. The big thing is we have to, at some point, have a national movement to stop the use of synthetic nitrogen fertilizer, right? And um, that synthetic nitrogen has damaged two-thirds of our water supply. It's the main cause of the dead zones, and there are now 405 dead zones around um, around the world, and we have some of the biggest ones. The dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico is as big as the state of New Jersey. So we're talking about really serious issues here that we really need to address, and the big one is um, synthetic nitrogen fertilizer. David Pimentel um, has studied both organic and chemical farming, and the organic farming of maize and beans in the U.S. Uh, averaged 30 percent less fossil fuel. and as Tim said, it conserves water, 
Um, you know, during a drought, you're in better shape. During heavy rains, we found out this year, we were in better shape with organic soil than our neighbors. So those kinds of things really make a difference. Organic matter is the key. The reason they call organic agriculture organic is because of organic matter. So um, we've, you know, worked for years on trying to uh, fix the soil and we feel like, you know, on all the farms where we've farmed, we've been able to fix that soil. So uh, we feel like we can restore this land without uh, a lot of difficulty. Um, in um, the San Joaquin Valley, we were farming on really sandy, loamy ground, and we were able to increase the organic matter in three years from one to 3.5%. Um, now that's not as much as we wanted to. You wanted to have it between four and 10%, but that's a tremendous increase on sandy loamy ground in a short period of time, and it shows what you can do. In six years on the Connecticut River Valley soils in Vermont that have been chemically managed for decades, we increased soil organic matter from 1.5 to nearly 4% and have ma maintained or increased those levels after that time. On heavier soils, you can increase organic matter much faster because it's, it stays there better. Um, so we really feel like uh, if the will is there on the part of the government and the will is there on the part of the, of the farmers, we can, um, we can replace synthetic nitrogen fertilizer. We get great yields and great quality um, on our produce and we don't get a lot of pests. Once the soil gets in balance, you don't have nearly as many pests. So we take care of all of our pests with beneficial insects. So these are some shots of our farm. We use everything from combines to horses, and um, you do 55 acres. Here's um, John plowing with these horses, and um, here's some of our produce for our CSA baskets. And then we have festivals, because we're celebrating agriculture and we're celebrating organic, so we have a pumpkin festival and a strawberry festival, and uh, you can see this was the strawberry festival with the tapestry in the background, and we always have music, and. People want to celebrate their food and they want to celebrate, period. So um, these are in our strawberry shack, selling strawberries, and here's our chickens. This is inside our farm stand. This is one, another one of the festivals. And then here's our sunflowers. We grow sunflowers for oil, and it's also a great cover crop because it, uh, it uh, breaks down really nicely and makes the next year really a nice crop. Some more of our stuff, and here's our strawberries, and that's all I want to say, but like, we can do this.